Deep to 120, Secrets of the Modern Day Japanese Blue Zones, Part 2, The Commonalities Between Siga and Singapore. That's something I'm going to talk about today, so stick around. Hi, my name is Sachiaki Takamiya. I am the author of the Ikigai Diet and Ikigai Biohacking. Okay, so I have started the new series. Yeah, the secrets of the modern day Japanese blue zones. Yeah, and in the last video, I shared with you what the modern day Japanese blue zones are. And I said Nagano Prefecture, Shiga Prefecture, Shizenka people, and the Japanese natural health are the components of the, Jap the modern day Japanese blue zones, right? So today, I would like to talk about Shiga Prefecture, which is the longest lived prefecture in Japan at the moment, and comparing with Singapore, because in Dan Butner's documentary program, episode four, he introduces Singapore as the, health, uh, the country with the healthiest life expectancy. Yeah, and then there are many similarities between Shiga and Singapore, right? So today, I am using this book as a reference. Now, the book was written by Yukiko Kada, who was the governor of Siga for a long time. Now, he, she is a member of national parliament, but she used to be the governor of Siga. And in the book, she talks about some of the policy that Siga Prefecture had for health and longevity. Yeah, so please watch the video until the end. Okay. Siga and Singapore. Now, one similarity, as you can see, is the name, you know, Siga, Singapore. Sounds similar? <laughs> All right. So those are two different places. I mean, Shiga is a prefecture in Japan, and Singapore is a country, it's a nation and a city in Asia. Yeah. And so, for example, for the other area, Shiga has 4,017 square kilometers, while Singapore has just 720 square kilometers. It's much smaller than Shiga, but the population, Shiga has only 1.4 million people, but Singapore has 5.6 million people. So Singapore is basically an urban area. It's a city, and Shiga is a rural area. Yeah, and therefore, uh, you know, approaches are quite different between the two, too. Yeah, but one thing in common is uh, both places had the governmental intervention. Yeah, so Singapore, Singaporean government uh, took many measures to improve the health of its citizens. Yeah, and Shiga's prefectural government, too, yeah, took some uh, measures to improve the health and longevity of the prefecture, right? And that is quite important to look at the, you know, the J Japanese longevity situation today, yeah? Um, so I said that the Japanese countryside is the land of longevity, yeah? This is because when you look at the lifestyles of senior citizens in Ogimi village in Okinawa, which became the model of the blue zone, um, you can find similar lifestyle elsewhere in the Japanese countryside among the senior citizens. Like, you know, in Siga, like my, my neighbors, if I look at my neighbors, they have very similar lifestyle to the people in Ogimi village. And the same thing is true in Nagano and Tochigi and other places. So I think the, the kind of lifestyle that is critical to longevity, such as moving naturally, you know, working in your garden, uh, having a community support, you know, things like a moai in Okinawa exist in other part of Japan. Not exactly the same, but we do have neighborhood associations everywhere in the Japanese countryside. So those quality probably support longevity, and therefore the Japanese countryside is the land of longevity. Yeah. Having said that, not every place in the countryside is long living. Yeah. Uh, for example, Aomori Prefecture, yeah, uh, was ranked at the bottom of this uh, average life expect expectancy ranking by prefectures. 
yeah, both for men and women, it came 47, right? And then, so the average age is 79.27 for men, and which compared to SIGA, that is 82.73 for men, about three years different. And for women, uh, 86.33, and SIGA is 88.26, so about two years difference. So how come? Because both are in the countryside. Uh, this SIGA is around here, and Aomori. Both are located in the countryside, and they probably have a similar lifestyle as far as the country life is concerned. Yeah, the difference is Aomori has high salt intake and high number of smokers and high number of heavy drinkers. Now, so this is something uh, can be managed by a governmental intervention. And in the case of Shiga, that's what really happened. Yeah. So Shiga Prefecture took some measures to reduce the salt intake and reduce the number of smokers. All right. So salt reduction movement is uh, one uh, measure that the Shiga did. But also Nagano did the same thing because Nagano also had a high uh, salt intake, but they, uh, the, as a prefectural government, they took measures to reduce salt. And Shiga basically modeled Nagano's example, right? Okay, but you might wonder why salt, you know, why not sugar or fat, yeah? Uh, this is because it is Japan, yeah? So we have a, so the countryside in Japan everywhere, has pretty much the same diet. That is washoku, which is Japanese diet, standard Japanese diet, which I don't necessarily say is the perfect diet from ikigai diet point of view, but compared to the average Western diet, like for example, standard American diet, uh, it, it is quite different. I mean, the, the kind of issues we're looking at is quite different, yeah? Uh, for example, uh, you know, miso soup, that's very common. And miso soup itself is very healthy. Um, but a lot of people in Japan have it three times a day. Yeah, one for breakfast, one for lunch, and one for dinner. And it is a salty dish, yeah? And then also we have pickles and umeboshi, and they're all salty food, right? Um, so therefore, the salt is the bilan in washoku. Yeah, and then... So, um, like, you know, Okinawa, the Ogimi village, yeah, uh, was considered to be longer living than many other parts of Japan before. And one difference was about the salt intake. Yeah. So, Ogimi village had a low salt intake. Yeah. And this is because in northern part of Japan, especially Tohoku region, yeah, uh, has very cold winter. So, in the winter time, they couldn't harvest any vegetables. So what they did was they came up with the idea of pickling vegetables uh, so that they, they could store. And then, so they ate a lot of salty pickles during the winter month with a lot of white rice. Yeah, so that was a big problem. And the same thing is true about Nagano because Nagano is a mountainous region. So it is quite cold in winter time, right? Therefore, yeah. Uh, kind of uh, increase the life expectancy in Japan, one thing many prefectures think is to reduce the salt intake of the people. Right, so we had this salt reduction movement. So uh, what, what do people do actually? Well, uh, th there are some health supporters or health kind of promoters assigned in each municipality or e each kind of a community really, because we have some health supporters in our neighborhood too. And then they often uh, have event uh, where you, you, they invite people to bring their miso soup, like homemade miso soup, and then they measure the salt intake, and then they introduce recipes of making miso soup without using too much salt, meaning without using too much miso. Uh, so, and this worked really well, yeah. I think, I can't remember for how many years, but uh, the the prefecture uh, succeeded in reducing the number of salt intake, yeah. 
Now, as far as SOTO is concerned, I don't necessarily agree with this policy because when from the Sizenka point of view, you know, naturalist point of view, um, if you're using natural sea salt, it's a completely different story. But I, I suppose most people in Japan uh, use store-bought salt. So I think in, the, in that case, it is good to reduce the salt intake. But if you're using natural sea salt, it's a different story. Yeah. And then for smoking too, um, as a prefecture, uh, Shiga uh, worked hard to reduce the number of smokers. So they had a strong non-smoking campaign. And one thing they did was to create zero passive smoking restaurants. So they encouraged many restaurants to register as a zero passive smoking restaurant. And uh, yeah, so that, that was, and, and that, that worked very well too, right. And for sport, um, we, the number of people who participate in sporting activity is the second highest in the country for men and the sixth highest in the country for women. So many people do some kind of sports in Siga Prefecture, but is it to do with, you know, governmental, you know, intervention? Uh, in, in, for a certain degree it is, yeah. But not uh, like Singapore, because in the, in the case of Singapore, uh, they did a lot. Like they created a fitness uh, kind of a facility everywhere in almost every neighborhood. They had this little park with a, uh, uh, put up bars and so on. So many uh, elderly uh, can come and then they exercise, right? Um, that is not the case in Siga. I mean, not, not to the same degree anyway, but in our town, which is quite small with a population of about 20,000 people, we do have a one park in the center of our town, uh, which was kind of built about a few years ago. And they have this one uh, push up bar and then one bench where you can do like a back extension type of exercise. Yeah. And also in the same park, we have this space uh, that is kind of walking practice zone. So what they do is, um, this is a starting point and then we have a, a, B, C, D. And then you measure like 30 seconds. In 30 seconds, how far can you walk? If you could get to A, that means you're walking fast and it's almost like a right jogging pace. And then they give you the estimated time and estimated uh, calorie consumption. And if you get to B, that's a brisk walking. C is the little fast walking and D is a slow walking and so on. So this sort of encourage people to, you know, practice walking, right? So we do have a facility like that, but you know, this place is five kilometers away from my house. So I hardly ever, you know, go there. I mean, I could always jog here or cycle here to, to do the pull up bar and stuff, but I usually go to a park nearby, which doesn't have this kind of facility, but there are some trees, so I can always hang on the trees, right? And then, but also we have a lot of sporting events in our town. For example, in December, we have Ekiden Race, which is a long distance uh, road relay. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, also in October, we have a sports festival. And then this is not an event, but we have a hiking club and many seniors join this club. And then they have maybe four or five times a year, they have some like hiking events. Yeah. Also, Shiga has the lowest number of seniors living alone, right? So now, so this is not necessarily done by the prefectural government, yeah? Unlike Singapore, because in the case of Singapore, they encourage people to live close to their parents. In fact, if you buy a property, near your parents or the grandparents, then you get discount or, or some kind of incentive they, you know, the government gives, yeah? Uh, that is not the case in Shiga, but uh, traditionally, 
uh, we have extended families and it's very common for three generations to live together. Uh, and that is uh, pretty much the same in most countryside in Japan. And there's a big difference between cities and countryside uh, in this element. Yeah. Um, number one, houses are bigger in the countryside. So it's easier for several generations to share the space. While in cities, houses are very small. It's very difficult. So I think in Tokyo, it is a big decision to make uh, when your parents becomes pretty old. Uh, so you usually you kind of live separately uh, when you're young, but when your parents get very old, then sometimes you look after them and then some people live with their parents, but it is often not easy to do it, even though you want to do it. Well, in Siga, it is very easy. In fact, I had my mother stay at my place at what the end of her life, and it was simply easier for me to do. Number one, the house was bigger to, you had enough space for that. Plus, everybody else was doing it in my neighborhood. It was a very common thing. So, I don't know, psychologically, uh, I felt uh, very easy to do. It's the same with everybody else. In fact, everything in my neighborhood is designed in that way. Kind of a, things are operated based on the fact that um, you know the three generations are living in the same house. For example, in TTA of the elementary school, yeah, uh, some we have a lot of uh, extended family households and a few nuclear family households. But sometimes the nuclear house, uh, nuclear family household complain about the meeting time of the PTA because we often have a meeting at nighttime. But they say it's a kind of difficult to leave the house because they have their children, right? But most households, they have grandparents look after the kid. Um, so, I mean, that, that kind of thing. So that, that means many households have their grandparents living in their house. Yeah. And that is actually uh, supporting uh, the old people's longevity. Okay. So, uh, Siga and Singapore have some commonalities, uh, although they are different because places are quite different. Siga is a rural, Singapore is urban. Yeah. And for uh, what they do in Singapore in details, please watch Dan Butonard's documentary program on Netflix. It's called Live to 100, Secrets of the Blue Zones. Yeah, episode four, The Future of Longevity. Uh, some of the measures uh, they do in Singapore is very useful. I think uh, your community, your, you know, your county can probably apply yeah and also in the program uh, they talked about a uh, blue zone project in the united states so this is something dan butner started it's turning a local community to a blue zone in the united states so they give some example of some uh you know towns or cities you know applying this uh project and then, you know, and, and changing the place, yeah? So in that sense, it's very practical, yeah. So please watch the program for details. And about SIGA, if you want to know more about how SIGA does it, then please watch my other video. The actual title is The Secret Behind SIGA Becoming the Longest Lived Prefecture in Japan. I uploaded this video recently, so it has the most up-to-date uh, up information. Right. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Again, my name is Hachiyaki Takamiya. I am the author of the Ikigai Diet and Ikigai Biohacking. If you like this video, please give me your thumb up and subscribe to my channel. And please leave your comment. So what kind of measures for health and longevity does your you know, prefecture, county, state, or municipality, uh, you know, does? Right. And um, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. So the next video, I will share with you more secrets of the modern day Japanese cruiser. So I'll see you in the next in the next video. Live with your ikigai!